What's up, Dragon Brood? Today, we are diving in on another budget list, trying something out different, seeing what we can do with what's out there. We are going to be playing some Azorius, I almost said Boros, Azorius Spirits. I don't, I mean, I guess there's enough red, white spirits, but anyway, today is Azorius Spirits. And the tough part we have here is there are quite a lot of rares we wanna play in this list to make it work the way we want. But you're on a budget, so we're gonna have to be really, really tight with our choices and see if we can find enough things that make this like this deck operate the way we want. So let's go hop right in and play some Azoria Spirits today and see what we can do on the ladder. All right, before we get into today's video, we got to remind you to check out our friends over at Ultra Pro. And I mean that. They are very good to me. They support my content. They support other Magic content creators. And the best thing is, if you need to protect stuff for Magic, Pokemon, D&D &D stuff, you know, if you're an anime fan, they've got stuff there for that. If you even have sports cards or you're buying booster boxes, they even make cases, believe it or not, for booster boxes and stuff. So you don't have to get your cellophane torn or whatever, and you can keep it pristine. So check out all the stuff you can get over at shop.ultrapro.com. Okay, so starting at the top, we do have Usher of the Fallen. This is a 2-1 one for 1. It can let you get extra tokens. We love that. But it's really just, it counts as a spirit. I think people forget this as a spirit, even though it has that weird artwork that tells you it's a spirit. People don't think about that. They most often think about this being a warrior or a human, even. Lantern Bearer. I don't love this card, but we're on a budget. It does fly. It's a 1-1, one, one, so it's old school. For those old school, it's a flying man. But it does give something plus one, plus one in flying whenever you play it with Disturbed, which is important, so we can't overlook that. We have a couple of Circle of Confinement, and this is actually reasonable. It lets us remove some of the opponent's creatures. You gotta have some removal, and this is an enchantment, and we want to have as many enchantments and spirits as we can, so this makes sense. A couple of Cradle of Safety here, which is also very good. And I want to admit, when I was working this, I actually got the Cradle of Safety idea from uh, Saffron Olive, actually, because he had done something similar with the list. And this, I was trying to find other lists to compare to, and this is a card I actually had considered, but didn't really pull the trigger on it, and I did change my mind and put these in here. But yeah, so thanks, Saffron Olive, for giving me a little bit of tip there on that Cradle of Safety. I think that's actually very cool. All right, so we have Mischievous Cat Guys. This card's not great either. It's on the ground, but if you can manage to put it on one of your flyers, which we have a way to make a lot of flyers, you can actually go ahead and get bonus cards, and that's great too. Not, I mean, it's, it's not nothing, but putting curiosity on something's actually really, really good. Then we have Dorothea, Vengeful Victim. I wanted to play more of these, but we really just don't have the room when we're talking about budget because we stay within our budget. We're trying to play nine or less rares and mythics, so this really puts a damper on that, unfortunately. So, two Dorothy it is. Borrowed time. Best removal card we can have if we want enchantments. And still stay within commons and uncommons. We've got three Katilda, Dawnheart Martyr. This is actually really good. Gets bigger for spirits and enchantments you control. You can play it out of the graveyard. It's flying, it's lifelink, it's randomly protection from vampires, which does matter every once in a while. So, lots of good stuff there. The best counter spell you can play for this deck is Geist Light Snare. A lot of times you're going to be playing this as a one mana counter and your opponent has to pay three more mana to resolve whatever it is you're trying to counter. Very good. So thumbs up to this. This card's fantastic. I did want to play more. I actually wanted to play two more counters, but I ran out of room. So I ended up just playing one. You find the Villain Slayer, mostly because in a pinch we can use it to draw two cards if we really need to. So it's another thing. And, and this actually lets us discard cards, which is a big deal because it's one way for us to get stuff into our graveyard and use the backside of some of these cards if we need to get those abilities. So keep that in mind as well. We're playing three or four, actually, Brian Comer. And this card's really good because you get two creatures whenever you play it. And if you target it with one of your auras, you get additional flyers, which is fan freaking fantastic. So we love that. And then the other spot we're spending some of our rares, or mythics actually in this case, is Hallowed Haunting. Because every time we play an enchantment, we get a spirit that gets bigger for the number of spirits we control. And since we have everything making spirits, and all our things can be enchantments, this is like the best card we can have if we're going to go ahead and spend mythics on something. Then we've got 9 planes, 10 islands, 4 glacial floodplain. Even though I don't love the floodplain, we got to have some type of multi-lands to help us get through, and we just got to play with what we got when we're on a budget. So, yeah, we're going to play this on the ladder. We're going to see what we can do. And then 
we're going to do a follow-up and talk about things we would change. Because I do think there's some changes we're going to want to this. But let's see how the games play out first. But be sure to check out the back end of the video so you can get updates. And we'll have a card spotlight for you. Yeah, I think this is worth keeping. I mean, maybe we can cast the Hallowed Haunting when the time comes. We'll see. Maybe we'll at least get to cast the cat. And then cat might get bounced. I don't know. It's definitely getting bounced. Or not? Maybe? Hey, opponent left them home. It could mean they're just going to kill it because they don't want to deal with giving us cards, honestly. Yeah. Though we do have a counter here. I'm going to play that land anyway. Let's see if we can connect. Problem is, like, how badly do we want to fight over this cat? I think is the other thing. Alright, they want it dead bad enough. We want the cards bad enough, so, sure. Probably not worth fighting over, honestly, but we did it. So, we're going to have to live with that. Okay, they're going to foretell. Makes sense. Uh, I guess we attack. Connect again. You know, I'm just being a jerker. I like this is awful play, by the way. Don't do this. But I'm kind of in the mood that I'm just like I don't want the opponent to have any advantage. Ooh, triple hollow hunting. I don't know if that's any good. All right, let's see what we got. Mana form Hellkite. Well. I don't get to do what I wanted to do, but uh, this is a good use for this. And uh, we'll attack. I don't think we're going to do anything else here. Ooh. Hmm. Crap. I kind of wanted to do something else. But uh, let's... Uh, dang. Ah, uh, uh, man... At the same time, though, getting these down next turn, even if they sweep the board, is fine. If we lose our cats, that's fine. They become enchantments. So, sure. Because the cinder class I'm here is just pretty bad. But that's okay. We're willing to accept that. Alright, and you're going to bounce both of them? Oh, you're going to demon bolt. Yeah, that's fine. Like, that that's actually a lot of resources to do just that, so that doesn't even bother me. That's way more than reasonable uh oh though it makes our guy snare not any good oh well that resolved anyway okay fair enough problem is i sort of want to play a guy snare to protect one of these but the reality is we can't we need to be able to counter epiphanies and that sort of thing right now uh, the good news is we should be able to resolve a Hollowed Haunting, and that should be nice, but we'll see. Opponent, no telling what they picked up. Oh, they decided to just foretell there, which is fine. All right. Now they can foretell. They can't copy and foretell. There's still three mana away from that. Uh, iteration resolves. I don't think that's worth fighting over here. What you want to do, opponent? Two, four, six, seven mana. Oh, Hellkite. How do we feel about the Hellkite? I mean, we do have Brine Cumber, which is fine. Uh, this is not great for us. We're at 20 life. I can make a flyer. The spirit we get off this doesn't have flying. Though. Oh, it does have flying. Um, then I guess maybe it's okay. I guess we let that resolve. I'm not going to love that, though. Oh, well. The deck said, never mind, bruh. I gotcha. We're all, all right with that. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. He's on fire! Um, yeah, I guess we just do the thing then, right? I mean, get us some duders. Uh, 
yeah, we attack. Why not? Now, I could have played this here and would have turned these into 5-5s, five but I think I'm just going to wait. Because I don't want to be completely shields down in case there's, like, a burn down the house or something here. Uh, yeah, that deluge is mostly fine. One of those ones where, like, we don't love it, but it's okay. Plus, if they don't do anything relevant here, we can just Brian Comer, get two spirits, and then, you know, block a divide by zero. And they're at 14, so that would be 15 on the ground. So that seems reasonable. Yep, that should do it. Just making sure, because this just says... The bigger for each spirit. This makes two spirits. This also gives something. Makes an enchantment. It makes two spirits. I guess that's the same thing. But we don't have to put another creature out there. And we make two more dudes. Yeah, it's fine. Alright, that'll do it. All right, opponent goes first. We're going to keep this. I don't really see a reason not to. I mean, we don't have blue for that, which is a little bit annoying, but eh, mostly fine. We'll see if our old Usher lives here. We'll find something to run into. Well, we didn't find anything to run into. What's the other side of that? Return two targets, no permanents from your graveyard to your hand. So they were playing Salty Snow? Interesting. Alright, well, we'll make a token until we figure out what all's going on here. And the third thing is choose three cards in each player's graveyard and they shuffle them in. Alright. So basically, they mill some stuff, they get to target some things to go to their hand, and then they shuffle up stuff. Weird choice, but hey, if it works out, who am I to judge? Oh. Blizzard Brawl. Ooh, that's annoying. That is very, very annoying. Now, not having that blue mana is really starting to come in to kick our butt here. I'm just going to get rid of that because I know they're not going to block with it. They're just going to be able to pump it. And it would be annoying to us. Alright, card shuffled in. This one's going to play a bear. Bear is highly annoying. Untapped blue land would be nice here, deck. Deck does not care about what I want. All right. I mean, that's pretty much it. Without blue matter, we can't do anything else here. We're, we're toast. Yeah, play another bear. Well, that's good enough, too. Yeah, I don't think the opponent's deck is all that great, but it is definitely good enough to get us. And I think that's all that's important, really. Alright, no attacks. I got a 3-3 flying lifelinker thing. Until we figure out something more here. The only good news is we have a flyer. I don't know how many kill spells they have. We're probably about to find out. But if it's another... Uh, Blizzard Brawl, I guess we can put it on a token? I mean, that would be something. Wouldn't be great, but it'd be something. No fight spells. Okay, that is good to know. Uh, blue mana, also nice. Definitely needed that. Uh, we're going to take a big hit from the opponent here, by the way. But we did get to gain some life. But uh, we're going to be taking at least 7, probably 11... 15 potentially on this attack step it's not going to be pretty depending on how badly they want to cast that other spirit of Aldergard. man if we can get an untapped blue source it'd be really nice because we could play both brian combers which would be pretty sweet all right narfi turns it into a 10 and a 2 that's actually not so bad uh yeah i'll go ahead and block with this that's fine doesn't have trample so we're not concerned we're definitely gaining more than that uh coming back the other way we will play a brian comer uh get two spirits all 
I'm going to attack for five in the air. Connect for as much as we can. Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm. All right, what do we got? I mean, we did this without blue mana for a big chunk of the game, so I felt pretty good. Unfortunately, that can be a flyer, and that's going to be very annoying. Not a lot we can do about that. Opponent's obviously planning on using that mana to activate the Ascendant Spirit, so that's going to not make things too much easier. I think I'm willing to take six. We'll toss... Actually, if we're going to block, let's block with this. The thing we can reuse. Hey, look, we found more mana. Man, that is the most exciting thing to happen in ages. Uh, let's see, when it is a battlefield, critter one. So we can put uh, this on. Oh, Catilda, I guess. All right, we'll connect. I mean, obviously, they're going to pump up the spirit all the way up, but, like, not a lot we can do about it. Yep. All right, we go to 28. We have a bunch of blockers. We're in pretty good shape here because, again, we can at least block with the Brian Comer. We know we have two potential spirits and our flyers, and we won. All right. All right, we get to go first. All right, let's keep it. Play a 1-1 one, one flyer, and we have some removal. Hopefully, we're playing against a creature deck, or this is not going to go very well. Um, not the greatest start here, but uh, let's get in there for one. And go ahead and play this. And we got two 1-1 one, one flyers. That's got to account for something, right? Oh, the opponent didn't play anything. What's that about? We're gonna fateful absence a token? Or I mean a one one? I mean like that could be a thing, I guess. Alright, I guess we just pass. Uh huh. What's even happening right now? Oh, our brutal Cathar. Hmm. How much do I care about Cathar? We could use these. Hmm. I'm wondering, do I care? Because, like, part of me is, like, I kind of want to let the Cathar take it and then use one of these. But I also, if I draw a land, I want to play that next turn. So, sure. If they have another Exile Duder, they just have another Exile Duder. Which, well, maybe they don't. <laughs> or maybe they do and it just doesn't matter here. Uh, Do we get rid of Cathar? Feels a little awkwardly greedy. But if we don't play anything, it's going to flip. So that's a little more dangerous, too. We don't want to do that. All right. Kind of one of those spots where it's just forcing our hand to play something. So, um, okay. <laughs> that was all right. <laughs> okay. Um... Yeah, we'll keep. I obviously have to draw more mana here, but this will maybe do? I don't know. I mean, we do have two of these. With this on the board, we'll be able to play them for two, but you don't really want to waste them on early things. So it's going to be a little bit of a tough situation. I do think it's cool they made a little avatar of Helena and Elena. I don't even remember seeing that. That's neat. My opponent. Knock, knock. Want to play magic? Maybe. Maybe if I poke their bat. Nope. Well, my dog reacts. I don't know if the bat even does anything. Nope, okay. I'm still alive. All my stuff works. It's the opponent that's frozen. 
Maybe. Hmm. Maybe it is me. I don't know. All right, here we go. All right, is the opponent actually there? Did Arena just start? Oh, they are there. Excellent. We can do some things. Uh, that's not going to do much for us. We really would have rather this been a land. Preferably a white mana, but... You know, we'll just have to see if we can take what we can get. We will counter that, though, because that was going to be hard for us to deal with down the road. An opponent, attack with your monk and pass the turn, please. Me and the brood would like to play magic. Especially with this bad hand. <laughs> well, I mean, I guess that does something, huh? And technically we're winning the race right now, so that's something. Are you going to exile our duder? Alright, that's annoying. But they do still get to turn the monk into a 2-2 here, I'm sure. Have another spell. Attack for 2. Yep. Oh, Kite Sail! That even gets to block my dude! Dang it! Well, that's no bueno. Wish I would've had that a while ago. Um... Hmm. Okay. Well, dang it. Alright, no attack. Probably got a block here. Hmm, that's annoying too. Man, we had to waste all our counters on just not the best things early. Uh, we'll at least block here and kill something. That seems reasonable. Alright, we're going to do that. Get this down early. Hopefully they don't have another of the uh, sparring regiments because that would be bad. Mm, that's not great either, though. Good news is, though, except for the flyer, everything's on the ground for the most part, so that's okay, I guess. Um, Go ahead and play this. Makes a 1-1. One, one. Get rid of this. Play a land. Alright, we'll see how much damage we can survive here, because we're going to take quite a bit. It does force the opponent to at least put a 1-1 one, one on Aspirant if they decide to attack with it. So it spreads that out around. Uh, that's unfortunately a lot. So we do have to block here. And we have to hope we can get two playable things or a pile of enchantments. One being a removal. That does not get the job done. Uh, however, it does gain life. So it's something... But if they have a way to get rid of it, we die. So, as awkward as our starting hand was, this definitely did not work out for us. Oh yeah, that's real bad for us here. I mean, I guess the plus side is we get to block and kill something? Uh, probably Aspirant? Let me take three, gain three? Not really sure what we're doing here. Oh, that was not the card we wanted. That's really bad. Whew. Yeah, all we can do is this. We gotta hope to find uh, one of our removal enchantments, maybe. Alright, we have to discard these, unfortunately. This gets rid of... Does it matter? Just get rid of anything relevant. Um, if we get rid of Luminarch Aspirant, we're still going to have to block here and take four, five, six, seven. If we get rid of this, we could block there and take one, two, three, four, five. All right, I guess we do what we got to do. We needed, like, Brine Comer or something there. Like, I don't know. That probably wasn't even good enough, actually. 
I need something I can put this on. Would would be a big help, actually. Oh, that's gonna get us dead. GG's. Uh, yep. We did. Ah, damn. All right, let's do it. Uh, oh, boo to shambling gas. Cards too good against our team. Too good. We do have some circles of confinement, though. I twitch. Sure. No blocks. Let me get rid of the eye twitch. Attack for two. What else you got? Nothing. Oh, that's interesting. Not great here, but it's at least an interesting card to draw. All right, let's see if they have something to sacrifice their creature. They probably do. They have a deadly dispute here. We really couldn't win. Maybe I should have just attacked, but I don't know. I feel like them getting the treasure was just going to be rough anyway. But they probably have it. Oh, they don't. What? Okay. I guess we attack. Nothing? Nothing. Wow. Okay. Oh, well, okay. You're going to meet up for one. Sure. <laughs> like, you do what you got to do, I guess. Now, I'm saving this because maybe the opponent tries to target it. Maybe they want a meat hook for one again to kill it. And we have a way to protect it and gain some life. All right. Cat is on the rampage. 2-2 two, two cat, ready to do work. Not like that. Guess beggars can't be choosers. I'm not playing both cats because I would like to have something to draw cards after things get weird. If there's another sweeper or something. I mean, they're likely one mana away from a blood on the snow, which gets back nothing at the moment. But the good news here is if they kill cat, we get to flip the cat over. Okay, there's another meat hook. We get to flip that over. Fair enough. Then I guess we'll do the only thing we can do. And put this on the other cat. And hope they don't have anything else. Cause I, But, I mean, the odds of that are pretty low. I have to assume they have something. There's Professor Onyx. Make a sack of dude. Welcome which makes the most sense. Anyway. Alright, we drew a creature. This one flies. Now, admittedly, you should probably wait until the turn you get to attack with it. But, meh. If they have something, they have something. I'm willing to accept it. Alright, there's the blood on the snow, sure. Man, I was just thinking, like, could we draw something to just get rid of the Professor Onyx? Our borrowed time or whatever would have been great. Without it, though, I think we're going to be in a lot of trouble here. Because the only thing we could maybe do is draw a Guy Slight Snare. And that's if they leave this on board. Well, they did lose two Planeswalkers there. So that's not nothing. Yeah, now I think they're just too far ahead. Yeah, we're dead now. We got nothing. Whew, we'll keep it. I mean, this is almost good enough. Maybe we'll draw a two-mana thing and then a land. And that'd be great. In that order, even. Ugh. It's gonna be so hard for us to beat Snowlands. Alright. Well, we're gonna have to be kind of careful with this borrowed time. I gotta figure out the best thing we're gonna do with it here. I 
I mean, they could draw some cards and kill our Lantern Bearer. That would make sense. Nope, just good old Jadar. So this is like snow zombies, maybe? Maybe? Um, makes me question what I want to do with this borrowed time, but I'm willing to wait it out a little bit. I assume if they have some... Oh, red mana and, and white. What is this? I have never seen such a thing. Uh, yeah, we just don't block here. Random as hell. I don't really know what's going on at the moment. I am 100% genuinely perplexed. Alright, let's do this. If the opponent's gonna kill Catilda, they're gonna kill Catilda anyway. Alright, Deadly Dispute can find an answer here, potentially. It did not. Alright. So now we're not in a bad spot, even if Catilda dies, because now we can play a creature, we can play Borrowed Time, get us some spirits. So not too bad of a situation here. Ooh, Kaya's a small bit of a problem, though. We don't like Kaya. Kaya exiles things. Get out and finish the job. Kaya makes us highly uncomfortable and unfortunate here, but uh, we're going to go up to Katilda first, which makes some sense. When I say go, you go. All right, we're at 17. I guess we're going to do this to old Kaya. what I signed up for. And we'll attack. This is not how I thought this game was going to go based on these first two turns, so I'm very intrigued at this point by the opponent's deck. This is interesting. Morbid Opportunist. That's a good one when you have a creature just going to outright die. That seems awesome. I mean, I'm just going to block the 2-2 two -two and take one. I mean, because that's going to die anyway. Yeah, it does me no good either way. All right. Ooh, not bad. Not bad. Uh, we'll get in there with those. Yeah, you can't block with the 2-2. Two -two. Okay. Starting to do some things. Now if Katilda dies, we can move Katilda over to one of the other creatures. And currently it's a 6-6, six, six, so I'm assuming Katilda is the priority for them to kill. They could blood on the snow here, though, and still get something back for three? Which likely is one of those... Oh, nope. Just spending their mana to kill a Katilda. Makes sense. Though, uh... I'm not sure how good that is for them. But we'll take two. No extra card coming because they're getting one right now for killing Katilda. Yep, no blocks. At some point, I'll block with the Usher because I'm not really using it to force anything through, so there's that. But uh, at the moment, I guess we try this? Hmm. This actually feels a little dangerous, because we put it on the Lantern Baron and it dies, we actually lose access to Katilda. However, if we actually put the Katilda on, say, this Duder, a burn spell does not kill it. Hmm. But they did use that to kill Katilda, and they didn't use that to kill something else. So I'm going to do it. If it's wrong, it's wrong. Oh, it was not. Ho, 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 ho. Look at there. Well, that seems good. Man, that was just context clues. Realizing just how they use their spells got us the right answer. I feel like I'm supposed to try to play this, so let's do it. 
All right, I may have been completely wrong. <laughs> Oh, this is not going to go anywhere well for us. Yeah, they can take our cat guys if I were them. That's what I would probably take. Yep. Smart move. That's what I would do. Alright. Don't really have much choice. I mean, there's a good chance... I say good chance. There's a chance they will use removal on this just to be able to attack and... Well, if they have, like, Blood Chief's Thirst. Or, I guess now they can have a Spike Field Hazard. Options, nonetheless. Let's see what they do. Looks like a dead Lantern Bear. Ooh, using a Power Word kill on that. Strong move. Okay. Not the play I would have seen coming, but hey, to each their own. Alright, gonna go ahead and get this down while we can, and we get an additional token that flies, so that's good. Reckless Stormseeker. Alright. Uh, do we block? Do we block? Do we block? Hmm... I say no. There's a chance we could just end up with enough blockers next turn that we could kill it. So, I guess we kind of have to play as though that may be an option. Not great, but it's something. Alright, what do we got? I mean, it's not great. We're trading our whole team for a Stormseeker, but, I mean, if it's what we got, it's what we got. This hand didn't, definitely didn't come together to do anything powerful here. My opponent has John colors, though, huh? And you're going to go and just turn that into a 1-1? One, one? I'm not sure I completely understand what's happening here. Block, and then I get my cat back, and I get to turn the... Okay, sure. Yeah, I'm not completely sure what happened. I think I'm just going to stop that, because I'm not doing anything else with my mana here. Um, These are in my yard. These are in my hand. Huh. We can play this on something. Maybe Lantern Bear, I guess. Actually, no. If we're going to do that, let's put it on a cat. Maybe. Hmm. So I feel like they'd be inclined to try and kill the cat. Which, oh, but this takes an extra blue. Then we can't counter anything. Dang it. That's not good. Uh, okay, we'll attack with this. Mostly want to leave this up, see if something crazy, a big planeswalker or something happens. We can use the snare, maybe, to stop it. Uh, I guess we just like, well, that gets to attack with haste, though. Gosh dang it. All right. We will block with this. Though, you know what? Uh, I might have messed up. I, I think I could have let the cat die and put the cat on the lantern. Because it also would have been... Well, they cost the same. Uh, Alright, I guess that wouldn't have been so bad. Um. Alright, do you want to kill this opponent? No, you do not, apparently. We would like to attack. I'd like to draw a card. That is not the card I was looking to draw, but it is the card I will accept. Please do not have a Meat Hook Massacre. <laughs> uh, they probably do, and that's going to eat our lunch here. 
Also, a dragon would be kind of rough. There's a lot of things that would not be good for us. Yeah, there's Meat Hook. Meat Hook's just so good. Yep. Ooh. Intriguing. What do we do with this information? We could play Cat. We could play Brian Comer. Make us a token. Katilda next turn. All right. I mean, I have to assume the opponent just has something to kill our stuff, but, you know, what are we going to do? There's the Gold's Band Dragon. That's a rough one. All right. Can we survive? No, oh, we had a grasp for that. That's awesome. But we get a token for that, right? Do we not? What's the backside of this? Is that not what I had on there? Uh, let's see. Whenever Brian gets to a battlefield and change gets 1-1, one, one, becomes a target. Oh, of an aura spell. Never mind. Uh, if I let that live and I do this on the Katilda, we can play this, maybe. I'm just going to take it and hope to draw land. Well, that's better than nothing, I guess. Not really what I wanted to draw, but it'll have to do for the moment. No attacks. Just in case they have a way to kill the Katilda, we could chump block. Though if it's a meat hook for three, we still die. Well, that's not true, because it would reduce the power of the Goldspan Dragon. So we wouldn't quite be dead. That makes us dead. <laughs> yep. Actually, no, it doesn't. Because we can double block Hive of the Eye Tyrant. Gain three, take four. We would lose another one. All right, so we're not dead yet. We're very, very close to dead, but not dead yet. Oh, you have a kill spell too? I was going to say that would have sucked. Ah, dang it. Brian Comer makes another flyer. So I think we got to do that. We can also target the Brian Comer and make an additional flyer if necessary. So there's that. Um, then we could play Katilda next turn. Maybe? Maybe? All right. Well, we have to hope we don't get nicked by a billion things. Like, okay, that's bothersome because now they have even more treasure to do something silly here probably another dragon oh chariot that's that's not good for us at all all right i mean it is what it is we got a chump block don't have a choice here we're setting up to try to do a long comeback All right, unfortunately, we're not going to be using this to protect the Katilda, so let's do this. Make a token. <laughs> Another Brian Comer. That's, that's actually not terrible here. Uh, that makes three blockers. Yeah, we're going to gain enough life that we kind of got to do this. All right. It's the best we can do. I mean, we go to 10, so it keeps us out of danger range. And we do have a handful of spirits and enchantments, so if there's a comeback opportunity, this is it. It also puts the opponent in a situation where they may not want to attack with their dragon. Believe it or not here. Because if we could play these things, they know we have access to these. They don't know what this is. I mean, they'll make a creature. We're just going to chump block with... The, oh, whoa. 
the opponent's just coming to get it. All right. Uh, we block. We block. Take five, I guess it is. Oh, because they tapped for the chariot. Actually, we didn't even take that. Oh, man. Can we do this? Oh, why were you not a land? Oh, if this was a land, we could have done one, two, three, four. I ah, still would have been enough. Still would have been enough. All right. All right. Let's start working on our next plan here. If I play this on here, we do get to give it a plus one. And we would make another spirit. But then we can't do anything else for the turn. Whereas if we do this and this, we at least make two blockers. Three blockers. Like, well, one on the ground, two in the air. All right. So let's do that. This also pumps up our uh, Katilda. Do we attack with the 1-1? One, one? Trying to think about how much damage we could end up taking here, but yeah, that looks safe. All right, we're at 19. We don't even have to worry about them getting another meat hook here. That, however, is annoying. <laughs> but we did put the opponent down to four. So now our flyers do potentially become a lethal situation. And we have the potential to keep making more flyers. Assuming we could find enough land. That would be great. We've been bad at that part so far. Uh, four, five, six. And we just take seven. Take six? Sure. All right, cat. What does cat do here? So this is an interesting thing, right? We can put Brian Comer on here. We could put this on there. Give it flying, make two additional blockers. Oh my gosh, this is such a weird scenario. Uh, we could play cat. Cat's on the ground, doesn't block dragon. If we don't do anything, we take 4, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 next turn if we don't have enough blockers, but we will have some number of blockers. Uh, we only have 5 mana. Man, somewhere along the way, if we'd have got a third land, but this is uh, just not cutting it. Okay, so... I think this is what we do. We play... Hmm. I was thinking we play this on the Brian Comer. Or play the Brian Comer on something. Uh, that doesn't help, though. Just trying to think of a way of, like, can we set it up in a way we get an extra card from the cat? But I don't think we can. So what I'm going to do is this. And then we kind of dictate what the opponent blocks here for the most part. And we just get a pile of flyers and hope they don't draw a meat hook massacre. I think is the game plan. Alright. And we made a pile of flyers here. We attack with this, this, this. Opponent goes to one. Yeah, you got to block that. So we'll get a Brian Comer back. Oh, they go to two. All right. So now it's on the opponent. What do you draw? Man, this is intense. Oh, man. All right. Activating Chariot. That's good. Because we don't die to Chariot stuff. All right, I, I mean, I guess it's safe to chump block. Opponent has one flyer, one, two, three. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, I was going to block anyway. So there we go. We got there. <laughs> yeah, let's see what we can do with this. Uh, You know what? Let's Let's go ahead. Let's see if we can keep pressure up here. All right. 
Seems reasonable. Let's attack. And I think I'm just going to attack for one and then play the cat guys. Because unless they're playing like Cinderclasm, I don't think that's bad. And if they try to Fading Hope or Divide by Zero on my turn, then we could go ahead and use our thing. Alright, let's go ahead and attack. I don't know what that was there. We had a bit of a connection drop. Uh, we'll play this cat. And let's just see what's up. Alright, so we might get what we want here. So we're going to attempt to attack. I think the opponent's going to try to divide by zero. No, they're trying to cinderclasm. Well, guess what? We're going to protect the cat. Because I would like to have a card. How you like that, opponent? Now, it does mean they could divide by zero or 80 other things here, but that's okay. We got some damage in. We got a card. We made the opponent waste a thing to not really kill something so we could play that out of the yard. So, not the worst scenario. Now, if we could find one of our spell counters here. Ooh, that's not bad either, though, deck. I see what you're doing. I love you for it, too. Ooh, we get to connect, even? Ooh. Ooh! Oh! I mean, you got me sounding like Michael Jackson over here. All right. How you is, opponent? Uh, no, sir. You done messed up, A.A. Ron! All right, let's do this. Yeah, no easy turns here. No easy turns. Oh, if they got an iteration, we like that. We like those. That is awesome. That is awesome. Don't touch my creatures again. Let me untap, opponent. Let me untap. You'll like me when I untap. Come on now. All right. That's what we want to see. That's what we want to see. Uh, let's go ahead and play this on the cat. Yeah, let's spread the love around a little bit here. All right, just land. We'll go ahead and put this in tapped because it's not going to do anything else. And we can at least protect our creature. Opponent is currently at eight, so that is lethal with what all is in our hand. We don't even care about Behold the Multiverse. It's all good. They bottom both cards. They go to draw. Got there. <laughs> Alright, so I'm not going to lie. I feel like we got a little bit lucky, but the deck played out very well. And I played an additional game off camera. We ran into uh, Is It Epiphany, and we actually won that as well. So I think we won both of our games against Is It Epiphany, which is very strange because I would not have figured that. However, our counter spells do come in very clutch in those matchups, as does Cradle to Safety. So that's also fantastic, too. So, yeah, this deck actually definitely overperformed uh, for a budget list. So color me surprised for sure, because I definitely didn't see that coming. I would say, though, if there was a thing to replace here, I think I want to replace the Usher of the Fallen with, I believe the card is Fleeting Spirit. I'll put that up here on the screen as well. I think that's, yeah, that's the name of the card. It's a two mana, three one that you can give first strike to, and you can also discard a card to exile it and return it. The first thing, though, is being able to protect a creature, and that's big, right? If your opponent sweeps the board, plays uh meat hook masker any of that type of stuff you can protect the creature but more importantly you can actually just discard a thing so you can get it in the graveyard and now you can use the aura on the backside of some of those creatures which is very good for this list as well so i like the resiliency and the flexibility it gives you so definitely want to add those in here now for today's card spotlight we're going to talk about geist of saint traft which for those of you that don't know that's basically what dorothea is based on from a previous version of innistrad so kind of cool but it's three mana, two, two, and it has hexproof, so it's very hard to kill. But every time it attacks, it makes a four, four that goes away at the end of turn. 
This card's actually really neat, and I would have loved to have played it in this kind of list. I'm kind of surprised in some ways it actually didn't get reprinted in the set. However, I'm sure there's some story reason or whatever. Don't, don't, no need to go post it in the comments. I know there's probably a story reason. And not to be rude, it's not a really thing I'm kind of into or worried about. I'm just looking at cards that are great to play here. But this is a card I think a lot of people forgot about. But if you want one and you want to play it, it's actually not that expensive. I want to say they're between two and three bucks or something right now. So it's still totally affordable. And I believe there's been a reprint on this one as well. But yeah, it's kind of a forgotten card, but I think it's cool how you can sometimes come back and visit a plane and you can kind of link cards up together and you can sort of see the progress between them. That's kind of neat. Now, don't forget, if you want today's deck list, it will be down in the description below, along with links to our Facebook gaming page, our Twitch streams, and our Discord. So if you want to come by, say hi, get deck help. Maybe you have some other budget brew you want some help with. Come on by. We can work on that. Also, don't forget, if you'd like to support the channel, you can be a member right here. You can get your name and lights in the credits. You can get to give feedback on what appears on the channel. You can even get your stuff featured here and get exclusive videos. So check that out. And if you don't want to do any of that, please remember to at least hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, hit that notification bell, because all those things really help out. And most importantly, tell people about the channel and share it, because that helps even more. But that's all I have for you for now. We'll see you next time.